So I mentioned earlier, I went to that drug alliance. I went to the needle exchange group who had their first public hearing. Last week in Anaheim, I was interested in Richard Sanchez was there. And um, it's, I didn't understand this until I went there, but you had a group of students who are at UCI who are actually doing the needle exchange. You know, a, a young woman studying to be a doctor, another woman getting her PhD on criminology, like really good, smart young people, right? We're like true believers. They want to help the world and reduce the spread of communicable diseases. And then at the other end of the table was a gentleman who's a member of what's called the Drug Policy Alliance. And the Drug Policy Alliance, if you go to their website and their mission statement, they absolutely stand for the complete decriminalization of all drugs. And they don't want us to punish people as a matter of public policy for what they put in their body. But what they don't understand is the consequences, both economically and health and everything else, for people when they do um, engage in that kind of behavior. So what I learned the other day, colleagues, is that the individuals that we are, you know, maybe stigmatizing in terms of their distribution of needles, I really feel, after being there for two and a half hours, that they're being used by the Drug Policy Alliance to advance a, a, a social policy when they're just do-gooder kids, you know, young people in school who are just trying to make society better. But what the Drug Policy Alliance is doing by mixing themselves with that benevolence, they actually have a whole army of young people going out and doing this craziness in our communities who may not even realize they're being used to advance a social agenda. And I wanted to share that with you because that was mind-boggling to me. And I had like this epiphany sitting there saying, because I look at these young people, right? And they're just like my, they're like my son. They're in college. Like they're really, they mean well. They do mean well. But unfortunately, they're being um, kind of, I believe, manipulated unwaringly by a group of people who, have, who are trying to advance a complete social agenda on society. So I just thought I would share that observation with you because personally, I didn't get it. I didn't understand it until I went and watched their town hall. And just so you know, they're, they're going to plan more town halls. And they absolutely acknowledge that they messed up big time, that they didn't communicate well. They did not do things well. They rolled it out prematurely. They could not explain how they're going to protect the public. They could not explain how they're going to deal with the excess needles on the street. Um, and they did a, a fairly good job, you know, trying to explain it. Um, but there's a whole other agenda going on that, that, that um, I'm not even sure the advocates were aware until, um, you know, they saw that. So anyway, stay tuned. It's coming to your districts. I don't know when. They haven't published the schedule yet. But, you know, you might want to participate in those community forums when it comes to your districts. Thanks. Board comments? Agenda. Agenda one. Okay. Any other agenda? Um, let me just uh, go. Yeah, I'm going to have my comment. Uh, before we do the adjournment, I will ask County Council to report out on our closed session. Okay, so um, to echo what you said, I had a meeting with um, who held herself out to be president of OCNEP, which is the Orange County New York Exchange Program. By the way, that is ter just a terrible name because it's, it's the program and also the name of the program. So it's like you can't talk about one without confusing people that you're talking about something else. Um, it took me a while for her to even acknowledge that she was president of, the, of this group. She couldn't figure out what title she was holding. Okay, and she was accompanied by, a, by the council who was a professor at um, UCI Law School. Um, and when I pointed out the, um, the flaws in both their application and the, the, the permit that was given to them and how it, it did not conform with the requirements under the law, it was very interesting to see their rationale for the need of exchange program shifting um, because I, I brought up the issue that you raised, you know, like if communicable disease was what really their goal, then why provide a cooking kit for drugs? Why tourniquets? Well, and, and other things too, you know, not just those things. Um, so then it became well, more than just communicable diseases. It, it was also dirty needles, as in like dirt, <laughs> like as in picking it off the ground and using it. Uh, never mind it is it's not neither here nor there it's not uh, that's not the intent of the 
of the law to deal with infection due to bacteria as opposed to communicable diseases and viruses and all that. Um, so that, that tells me that it supports what you said, which is they mean well, they're young, they're, they, uh, they're altruistic, but I think their passion is just misplaced. And, and I think people with uh, an agenda can easily tap into that uninformed enthusiasm and, and push them in a direction that they probably hadn't thought it through completely. Okay, so uh, Mr. Page, go ahead and do the reporting out now.